This beautiful gray chicken is blue, named after the Velociraptor in the Jurassic World movies. She is a prairie bluebell agar. That's her breed. And then this chicken is Rexy. Also, I believe named after a T-Rex from Jurassic Park or Jurassic, Jurassic World. I don't know. Um, she is a black-laced golden Wyandotte breed. And then this is Sharptooth. If you've seen uh, Land Before Time, um, Sharptooth is the T-Rex. Um, and Sharptooth here is a Starlight Green Agar. Let's see, where are the other babies? Hmm. Okay, the white chicken here. This is Rufflet. She is one of our egg-laying hens. She lays the white eggs. These two chickens look very similar. One is Hey Hey and the other one is Baby. The way I tell them apart is that Baby has a little bit of light feathers under her chin. Oh my gosh, there they go. This one with the black, some black feathers on her head and on her tail is Torchic. She is a bossy bossy chicken and she might, she, she's the one who might peck you. She's kind of the alpha chicken. So, uh, yeah, keep an eye on her. Let's see. Okay, so this is baby. Baby. Okay, this is Hey Hey because she doesn't, she has kind of darker brown feathers under her chin. And then baby here, if she would lift her chin up, you can see she's got kind of blonder, lighter feathers under her chin. They are, they look identical to me, but supposedly they're different breeds. I think, um, Hey Hey is, a. Uh, I think Hey Hey is a Isa or ISA Brown. And then, um, Baby is a Golden Comet. They both lay brown eggs. And then Torchic supposedly is also came out of a bin of chicks labeled Golden Comet. Although I'm convinced that she's actually a cinnamon queen. But cinnamon queens, ISA browns, and golden comets are all very genetically related to one another. Which is why they pretty much all lay the same color of eggs and all pretty much look the same. Except some minor color variations. I am trying to find my two other babies. So this is Indominus. She's so fluffy, isn't she? She is called, uh, well... A salmon, salmon, f f I can't pronounce the other part. I'm going to say flavor roll. She's my flavor roll. So um, she's very floofy, as you can see. Um, and her name, yeah, her name is Indominus Rex. So she is also named after Jurassic World. And this black beauty right here, her name is Oviraptor. So she has a non-fictional name after a dinosaur. Her breed, oops, where'd she go? Her breed is Black Copper Moran. Chickens love their scrap food. Be nice. Be nice to your little sister's baby. <gasps> Be nice, baby. Chicken's very hungry. Yeah. So, I like to just have this small bag full of their feed so that it's small and easy to carry down to the chicken coop. Um, and then when this small bag gets low or empty, I refill it with the big bag. And so 
get it out of the cooler. And then you could use a shovel to transfer. If the bag's light enough, you could you could dump it, but right now it's like 45 pounds and I'd rather not. So here, I use this one. So. Oh, Logan. Just put um, a couple. Okay, okay. Just, you know, fill it up to the top. And then you can reclip the bag. And just take the small one down to the chickens. So, in the back of the house is the chicken station. So, we have hose water. And these coolers are what I'm gonna to use to store the big feed bags in. I've got our little transport feed bag. We have this grabber in case you need to um, use it to pick up or move anything. Um, watering can. And then over here, this is the scoop that I use to um, transfer feed or whatever from one bag to another. Then. I've got a pair of um, gardening gloves here in case anyone wants to use those. I have a spare bungee cord and clips. I don't think you're gonna need those. This is a cap to the chicken, one of the chicken waterers. Um, you might not be able to use it, but just leave it in here, please, because I might use it later. Um, I'm gonna show you how to add a little bit of this. DE to their feed as well as a little bit of grit and then also in this box I've got a bottle of hand sanitizer if you want to disinfect your hands at any time. I'm also going to include a styrofoam egg carton in this little outdoor kit right here um, for better or mostly worse, styrofoam is not biodegradable, so I know it's going to be just fine from any weather, um, and hopefully I've wedged it in here well enough that it's not going to blow away and it'll be protected in this little corner of the house from the wind. So if you forget to bring an egg carrier of your own on a particular day, go ahead and, and use the one here. Just keep in mind that if it is wet and the eggs get wet, then you're going to want to refrigerate the eggs because the water will wash off the natural um, protection on the eggs called the bloom that keeps them fresh. So every time that you fill up a new bag of feed, um, just like a new, brand new refilling the whole bag, I like to add a little bit of this grit and then also this DE powder. So the grit, there's a spoon in here and you can just get like one or two spoonfuls like this and dump it in here. Logan, do you want to get another spoonful of that and add it in? And the grit is important because it helps the chickens digest the hard leaf material that they sometimes eat. All right, so like two or three scoops is fine. All right, Logan, now we're going to add some scoops of this. Um, the DE is powdered clay. It's natural and edible. And that is a natural way to help the chickens fight off some um, disease and like microorganism type parasites. So um, it helps their digestive tract um, kind of in a natural way. So we don't wanna give them too much. So again, like two or three scoops is good. And then we can close these up. Go ahead and close it. Push down hard. And then I put the spoon back in this bag. And you can zip, zip lock that and we'll put them back in the basket. So once you've added some of the DE, which is again, is that powdered clay and the, the grit to a new refill bag of chicken feed, I just kind of like jostle it and, and tap it and shift it to move those ingredients so that the, it's intermingled with the rest of the feed. So 
I just kind of do this for a while and I might, I might zip lock the bag and kind of just turn it from side to side gently to mix it up uh, before I give it to the chickens. The first cooler here has the open bag of chick feed. It'll have this little clip on the corner where it's opened. Um, it's pretty heavy. So, but this is where you'll want to go first once your bag of feed runs out um, and you can refill it with this big bag of feed. And this feed is called flock raiser. So it's appropriate for both the baby chicks that are now about two and a half months old, as well as the year old laying hens. Once, um, in the event that this bag of food runs out, it might not. Um, I have a backup, a backup bag in here that hasn't been opened yet. I know these coolers might not be the most secure place to store chicken feed, but we're just going to give it a try. I don't think there are any mutant raccoons around here that I've seen, so hopefully this does the job. So I have rearranged some things in the chicken coop to hopefully make feeding and watering a little easier. There is this trough that I put a little bit of feed in, um, not too terribly much because it is um, exposed to the weather and then other animals that might be able to kind of get in there easily and eat it, bugs and stuff. Um, but I do put some in there. And then for a watering bucket, um, I like to fill this bucket up. There's a hole in the top and I'll show how to pour water into there from the watering can. Um, so that's, that's one feeder and one water. Then I have a bucket right here, again, which you could fill with a, uh, a watering pail from the outside of the chicken coop and not actually have to go in there. Of course, this particular one can get, can and will get dirty over time. So maybe every, uh, two or three or days, it's worth dumping the whole thing out just right into the dirt and refilling it with fresh water. Then there's a hanging feeder in the middle of the coop. And so to, to refill that one, we would have to go inside the coop. Um, so my kind of makeshift lock for the cage is to use a, a nut and a bolt to go through a hole that's right here. So I'll show how I lock it first. So it just, the nut and bolt just dangle there in the, um, in this open lock hole. And so that way, even, um, if a mutant raccoon came by and tried to lift this with their mutant raccoon paw, the bolt would stop the door from opening. So then if you have to go into the chicken coop to refill the feed or, uh, do anything else, then you would just un unscrew the nut from the bolt and, um, and just lock it up when you're done. Um, I don't do anything too fancy while I'm in the coop. I literally just leave the bolt right there on the outside and try to remember to lock it when I'm done. So, so to enter the coop after you get the bolt out, you can, you can either pull one of these and then bring the door out, or you can open, pull up the other one and push the door in, whatever your preference is. I've got my bag of feed, and then I'm like, back chickens, back chickens, get back chickens. All right, this one right here, Torchic, she's a bossy chicken and she always tries to peck me when I come in here. So I recommend wearing closed toed shoes and even pants if it's not too terribly hot. Um, but I think she likes to establish her dominance and she always comes and, and pecks me, but maybe she'll leave you alone. So here is the feeder and I'm just gonna refill it a bit, a bit with, my, with my transfer bag here. You too, Logan. And I just kind of top it off. 
and I might I might give it a shake. Shake, shake, shake. I need my poo picker upper. The poo picker upper? Yeah, well, we're going to go get our hair cut, so we're not going go, to pick up chicken soup right now. If you haven't already filled up this one from the outside, um, you can just put a couple, a little bit of fresh feed in here for for the chickens. Since there are nine chickens now, and the big the big girls are still getting used to being kind and inviting to the little chicks, it's nice to have the two different places for them to come get feed so that they can be more spread out from one another. Pick up chicken poo. Pick up chicken poo. You guys do not have to pick up chicken poo. It's just something Logan does for fun. Mm -hmm. Logan's going to demonstrate how to get water for the chickens. Go ahead and get the watering can, Logan. He gets the watering can. He turns on the valve. Did I turn it off too tight? Mm -hmm. All right, try again. There you go. And then he's gonna fill it up. Try again. By the way, our, um, the squeeze handle to the hose right now, the nozzle is a little bit broken. It, it still works, but I just didn't want you guys to worry about it being broken because it's already broken. So for watering, we can bring the watering can over and more or less try to aim to get the water into this hole in this bin. Uh, probably easier without holding a camera at the same time. Don't worry about making a mess because the chickens are probably hot and might cool off a little bit with a splash of water. So you can just, again, pop it off. can see the water level. Logan didn't quite fill up this watering can all the way. Nothing too precise there. Babies are demonstrating how they drink from their, their water bucket. finger is not food. When the water bu bucket starts to look a little too yucky, um, you can literally just dump it out, I guess. Like so. And then I sort of try to secure this bungee cord around it a little bit. Kind of keep it in place, but nothing, uh, nothing too scientific. That. So then, and then I keep this rock here to kind of help again keep it in place. And then um, you can just refill it about halfway or so with uh, fresh water from the watering can. Or you can just refill the bucket here with fresh water from the watering pail, from the hose in the back.
out that much so they can dunk their heads in. If you'd like to pet a chicken, I recommend petting them on the back like so. Some like to be pet more than others. Torchic's interesting because even though she is a bossy chicken and likes to pet me, she is the one who also lets me pick her up. Huh. So here she is letting me pet her and pecking me at the same time. Silly chicken. If you want to pick up a chicken, I recommend just kind of using two hands and grabbing grabbing where their their wings and shoulders are and, and holding firmly, keeping keeping their beak away from your face and their scratchy little claws away from your arms and body. I can't really demonstrate that while also holding the camera. Mm -hmm. Ow! Don't check. Ow! Bad chicken. Naughty, naughty chicken. Hi, babies. Come here. Oh. Sometimes they make funny noises when you pet them. Right? Who's a good chicken? Who's a good chicken? I will try to demonstrate picking up a chicken. So come here, Torchic. Ah, don't peck my feet. Come here, come here. Here we go. There we go. The one arm chicken football hold. Torchic loves her cuddles. See her dirty feet? Be a good chicken, Torchic. Who's next? Who wants to be picked up next? You do. Maybe Rufflet never wants to be picked up. Rufflet is a flighty bird. Then to get eggs, um, you might want to have a, um, even an egg carton with you, but there's a lock down here and it might take it a little getting used to, but um, so it'll probably be like locked like this, maybe when you come and then you turn it to the side and then you pull that off. It takes some finagling. And then you lift the top. The top's kind of heavy. And there are four nesting boxes. But all the chickens right now like to use the same nesting box. And also, frustratingly, Torchic, the, the uh, queen chicken, also sleeps in this nesting box and poos in it. So that's super annoying. And sometimes we get dirty eggs. <sighs> Torchic. So, um, depending on everything, sometimes the eggs are clean and sometimes they're a little, a little dirty. But um, I can, I, I can hold three eggs in my hand. But uh, you may want to have some help or have a container. Um, also, because the, the lid doesn't stay up by itself it's heavy and it, it'll just fall down so you have to use one arm to or hand to hold up the lid hold the lid up while you get the eggs and then you have to relock it so here i am holding three eggs trying to hold a camera and relock it you want to get the little latch back through and turn to the side. That way the mutant raccoons can't get in there. Um, I think so, since it's summer I like to keep the windows open because uh, even if there's a breeze it's not going to be a 
particularly cold breeze. So I keep this little slidey window open for now. And then there's a door on the other side that latches closed and shut and I keep that open too. So you don't really have to do anything with that. So this is a little bit of an experiment, how to fill up their food trough from outside the pen. If you do not want to, um, if you do not want to go inside to fill it. So I have set this old vacuum tube here from outside and then I'm going to get my bag. I'm going to try to pour it down this hole. Let's see if that works. easier to go inside and just feed from the inside but if you really don't want to go inside because you don't want to get your shoes dirty or you don't want to get pecked then this is a workaround to at least give the chickens some food in this little trough from the outside. And then the last thing I'll show that I hope that you don't have to do is how to clean their chicken poop out of the chicken coop. Nice rhyme, right? So, okay, there's a couple things that I do here. Again, I don't, I don't think you're going to need to do this in a two-week period. Um... So it's totally up to you and your mom. Okay, so one of the things I do to do this is I, um, there's two latches for this door that opens. It's separate from the window. The window can close and it latches once here in the middle, but I keep it open for the summer to um, give the chickens fresh air. So then I can unlock this door by doing this latch and this latch. And of course, when we're done, we're just gonna wanna make sure to lock it up again. You can open it up. It's daytime. The chickens probably won't be in here unless they're uh, laying an egg in the nesting box. And so it's obviously really dirty in here right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and clean it right now. The first thing I do is I remove the roosting bars. And this might be something that you want to wear gloves for. I just usually wash my hands really well when I'm done. So the roosting bars have notches on either side and I just lift them out. And I lean them against the tree right here. Okay, and then I get my shovel, which is right next to the tree too. And I scoop and since I'm right here in the woods, I just kind of have like a little, let's call it compost manure pile over here, this dump. So I just go ahead and I do this until I get most of the waste out. Actually, this whole panel slides out right here. You can pull out this whole floor and pull it out and dump it. But for me, I actually find that it's a little neater and less messy and germy if I scoop and dump with the shovel. So that's what I do. After several minutes of shoveling, it's, it's pretty clear in there. I mean, obviously still really dirty, but um, a lot of the 
matter is now removed. And so I can put my shovel back up against the tree. I can put the roosting bars back. And they just, again, directly set into the notches. And you could clean this without removing the rooster bars, but it just might be a little bit more difficult or you might not be able to clean it quite as thoroughly. Okay, and then um, of course we have to close this back up, otherwise our chickens would escape. Of course, if any time a chicken were to come in through the little door while you're cleaning, you might wanna take a pause so that they didn't escape and close up this door. Locking both the bolts, uh, making sure no mutant raccoons can get in there, of course. Um, these doors stay closed for right now. So there's a bolt here, 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 and another one under the dirt to keep those panels closed and locked at all times. So that's it. After I've removed all the, well, most the chicken poop from the, from the coop where they sleep, um, and then also, in my case, from the nesting box that Torchic likes to sleep in every night, um, I can put in some fresh pine shavings. And so, in general, it looks a little more habitable in there. This is a somewhat cleaned out coop. Close the door, lock up. And then finally, even though it may not look like it, I treat chicken poop very seriously. And so please, 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 when you are doing anything with the chickens, try not to touch your face. Try not to touch your phone like I'm doing right now. Use hand sanitizer as soon as you are done with your chicken chores. So again, here's all our stuff. The, the grabber in case there's any trash or something you have to move from some part of the coop. Yeah. The pail, That's the fine. grit, yeah. the DE, the That's food fine. scoop, the food yeah. pipe, <laughs> yeah. and uh, the hand sanitizer yeah. in there. And then when you are, are all done, what do you have, a purple box? Oh, is it hard to open? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll help you in just a minute. And then um, even after you use hand sanitizer, I recommend washing your hands super well with soap and water when you're all done. And in my case, if I do anything like shoveling chicken poop, I take a shower and change my clothes. So thanks again. All chickens, I got pie for you. I got pie for you. Thank you.